you who don't know me, and I'll just do a quick uh, introduction of myself. I am a former rugby referee, player, coach, youth development director, kind of done it all in rugby since I started in 1998 as a player in UW lacrosse. Um, went on to become an international referee in both sevens and fifteens. My most recent role was as youth development director in Minnesota, which I was for two years before the pandemic hit. And uh, when it hit and 2020 came and everybody went bankrupt, I decided that I wanted to try my hand in a new sport and do something more professional and maybe make a little bit more money and just learn something new in life. And so I transitioned to football. So I'm now an American football official, having my sights set on making the NFL. Uh, hopefully Big Ten within five years. It was my first year doing Division One college and the Missouri Valley Conference, um, which the number one and two teams in the FCS in the country were NDSU and SDSU, which are two Missouri Valley. So it's kind of fun that I get to rep really good teams because the Missouri Valley is a pretty strong conference as I work my way up to the Big Ten. But anyway, I was asked to come here because I am from Students Point, from Wisconsin, and so Todd always tells me everybody's proud of me because I'm a Wisconsin product. So that's really why I'm here, but also I still love rugby and want to give back, but I haven't really been involved for a couple of years. So it's nice to get me back out here and, and share some knowledge with you guys. But really today is going to be about a discovery process really. And as much as you guys put in is as much as you're going to get out and just learning about what's in your referee toolkit. And of course, this isn't all for referees. I know we have coaches in the room and stuff, but it's really great collaboration. So they know what their referees are working on and what referees can do to work together to kind of build this toolkit. Because it doesn't matter what sport you're in, that's very important. And whatever role you're in, coaches have their toolkits as well, um, and, and referees do. So we can just maybe kind of work together with that. And... This is just the agenda for the day. Um, Introductions, I just kind of want to go around the room and just really briefly just say your name, where you're from, what your role is, how long you've been in rugby, just because we are going to be getting into groups, so it's going to be an icebreaker, and then I can learn very who you guys are too. Um, our primary goal is just to be more prepared, feel more confident. It's really about getting experience, and um, it gets frustrating sometimes. I know I've been there to want to get up higher, do more things, think you're better than you are maybe, but like you can't really rush experience. And so that's what we're gonna learn is even though you can't rush experience, like we say in football, you gotta get more snaps. So you just have to get that experience on the field, but you can obviously be more prepared when you do get on the field. And obviously as a referee and in rugby, it's really special. Like when I go to football and I'm like, yeah, I'm the only referee on the field, they're like, holy crap. Like they can't believe there's one referee on the field. So it's special in some ways, but it is more challenging in other ways. So I think that's why like having a toolkit is much more important because it's just you sometimes. Like when you're doing games and you don't have assistant referees, um, it's just you and you need to know how to handle it. And, and you can learn these things hopefully today, some new things so you can feel more empowered when you get out on the field. So we're gonna go with the breakout. Um, the breakout groups is really what's gonna drive this. So when you guys come up with some of these things, you're gonna collaborate. When we get done, we're gonna come back together. I'll put them all up here. So if ever, anybody wants to see what other groups have and take notes, we can have it up here together and then kind of fill in some holes and maybe things that we didn't touch. And then we'll, that's just part of what the summary is gonna be. And then I'll just open it up for questions. So um, just, and, and you can ask questions as you go. This is a very like open presentation and it's gonna be driven by you guys, like I said. So introductions again, who are you? What's your experience? Where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. We're gonna start with Jake. We know a lot about Jake, probably most of us, but he told me he wanted to be the first one yeah. to speak. So. Yeah. yeah, I'm from Madison. I've been in rugby 20 years. And you are a player, referee? Yeah, all that stuff. Yes, player. you want to hear your Player, voice. referee, ref administrator, coach and athlete. I'm Phil, Madison, Wisconsin, 16 years, player, referee, and coach. Uh, Zach Tillman, uh, played for maybe six, seven years, just started refereeing uh, this past year, and um, also uh, administrator for several areas. Where are you from? Uh, from New Jersey, but I'm in Madison. Okay. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Where are you now? Yeah. Where are you? I like it. Yeah. Um, I'm Ellen. I've been in the sport for about 14 years now. Um, Cat player currently. Too. Where are you? Um, right now I'm in Los Angeles. So. I'm Michaela. I'm from Kansas in Wisconsin. I played softball and rugby since about well, third grade. I've refereed leg for four years and tackle for two now. Love it. Uh, I played ball state in Kansas in Wisconsin. Um, played since ball state like third grade, so I've been all there. And I've refereed flag for about four years. Fantastic. I'm Andy Greenbay. Uh, I've been playing since 2004, refereed since. And I also in the last you know, over a year I've been involved in uh, the administrative side, so we use soft Where do you live? Green Bay. Green Bay. Okay. Um, Alex, I live in Milwaukee. Um, referee administrator, uh, referee development officer. So I'm gonna be with that kind of stuff. And I've been in rugby 12, 13 years. My name's Alex. I live in Madison. I've been a player for about two years now and I uh, just started refereeing the past summer. My name's Greg uh, from Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, player since 2008, uh, referee since 2013, I believe, and then I've been a coach since 2015. Uh, I'm Ethan from, from Milwaukee. Played for 12 years. Um, Recently, just started refereeing and I'm a head coach for the Monkeys. Okay, fantastic. Brian Gleason. Moose. Um, <laughs> dad, or something. Um, so, 1998, I was introduced to rugby at Whitewater, and since that time, I've played a little over 13 years. Been coaching for about 10 years, refereeing for five, been on the union board, the society board, and the youth board. Uh, I'm Jen. I'm out of Germantown right now. Uh, I started playing in Australia in 1999. Um, had to get out of the game for a little while, go to a job with these kids, and got back in and been roughing for about six years now. Uh, I'm Brooke. I'm from southern Wisconsin, but I live in Appleton right now. I've been playing for six years. Uh, just started refereeing in the past year, but I do also referee basketball, so just kind of trying to get more into that with rugby. Steve Sevier, Wisconsin Referee Society. I live in Milwaukee. I coach and mentor referees. And Steve did a lot of that for me just um, through the years. So Steve and I go way back, and, and Steve is a, is a great resource just for all you Wisconsin people if you don't already know that. He is a great resource. I could say that about you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, I'm Dana Stevie. I started playing in 2009 at Florida State. And I actually met Leah at the Olympic Training Center. I think you gave me like my level 100 coaching certification or something. I uh, started refereeing over COVID. I played PR7s and then I also am now head coach at Queen's University. Uh, I'm Ryan from Cleveland. Uh, I started playing in middle school about 15 ish years ago. Um, I still love playing the last couple of years. Uh, I started coaching high school five years ago. Uh, and I started working for Rugby Ohio for like two weeks ago. So oh. I have it several ago. Awesome. Good. I'm Dan Hayes. Um, currently the old guy in the room. Started playing in 93. Um, and then um, I've been coaching for six years on the board of Rugby Ohio. First of all, I just want to talk about what our primary goal is. And and you guys, I'd like to hear your ideas. I, I, I'm going to say something about these clips, why I have these clips are, but just talking about our primary goals to be prepared, right? Feel like you are empowered to make these decisions. So just a couple of people if you want, just throw out some ideas of what is your primary goal? For referees, um, when you're going into a game, and I don't mean like, I'm gonna work out only having 20 penalties or anything like that. But like, what is your primary goal on the day when you're going into any game? Whether it's a high school game, whether it's a senior level game, college, whatever, just throw out what your primary goal might be on the day. Alex, go ahead. Uh, facilitate the best game possible. Yep, sure. Have a safe game. Hundred percent. Yep. What else? Anyone else? Maintain the flow. Yep. All great things. Couple more things I want to throw out. Your goal might be on the fun. Day. 
is over mm-hmm. those back coordinators. What do you say? What do you say? Making sure that they have them. Yes. <laughs> and that I have one. Yes. <laughs> exactly. These are all great things, and these are all things that we want to do. And and to me, I one major thing that I worked on as I progressed was just being invisible. That was my goal every game, and that's that comes into what you all said. When you can do that and you can do it invisibly and have a safe game, a fair game, make sure the players are having fun. You know, making sure everybody's having fun. Invisible to whom? Yeah. So to everybody. The players included. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then I'll talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So, so that that's that was my goal as I was going up. And how do we do that? And I guess I'll just say that right now, Jake, is that's part of having your toolkit. So when we use the tools in our toolkit, we we try to do that, and that'll that'll come up more. I don't want to say too much, but when do we use these tools so we can be invisible referees to basically everybody because we do want them to have fun. This is this is for entertainment, right? Sport is for entertainment. Sport is not the end all be all, but it is entertainment. It's entertainment whether you're doing flag, it's entertainment whether you're doing a test match. But everybody's watching as a product. It's a bigger product. And we have to keep that in mind as referees. And when there is a great flow of a game, do you notice the referee there, Dana? No. Right. It's fine. Exactly. And nobody does. Your coach doesn't. They're not yelling. The players aren't yelling. Because we you know, we came to a presentation last night about referees. When the coach starts, it's just a domino effect. Right? So if we can be invisible to everybody, Jake, We've got flow, we've got fun, we've got safety because parents aren't yelling that their kid just got a concussion or got their neck taken off or whatever the case might be. So just think about that a little little bit as we're moving forward and, and breaking out. But with these with these primary goals, you can just tell that these referees, we've got Wayne Barnes here who's ref several World Cups and Joy Neville who's ref the World Cup final in 15s. They're prepared, right? When we talk about what our primary goal is and being prepared and using your toolkit. And I and I use both of these at, at um, scrum situations because they know right away because they're prepared and they've had experience what they're gonna do. I mean, look at Joy, she's not taking any garbage. They're over there like still strumming and she's like, screw that. You know, she knows exactly what she needs to do, who's pulling what down, who the penalty is going to, right? And she's already probably talked to them at some point in this game and a scrum is a great point, right? We've heard about, heard about this a lot. It's a downtime to talk to these players, to use tools in your toolkit, to practice the tools in your toolkit. This is a really great moment to do it. And because they have this preparation and because they feel like their decisions are solid and what they've done, they're able to just quickly make these decisions, you know? And these guys are still on the ground, but these guys are like, yeah, we know we're getting a penalty. This is awesome, right? So just think about these images as you guys get into groups and just think about um, the scenarios. Yeah, they're just basically go out and see the pattern. You're going to be the speaker, and just discuss and record both common and uncommon scenarios we have seen that you can imagine. Anything we can talk about here, because anything we can talk about in the room will help. And then discuss and record both conventional and unconventional solutions. So again, what tools did you use? And then this is just kind of generic, and it doesn't need to be any. I put like use one through five star ratings, but basically I just want you to rate knowing, hey, maybe I tried this before, it wasn't very successful. But just by sharing that, maybe somebody else can learn, okay, maybe that doesn't work so well. But also we're all different, right? We're not cookie cutter. Nobody wants referees to be, you know, coaches sometimes yell like they want us to be, but at the end of the day, they don't really want us to be. So not everything that works for Jay um, is gonna work for Dana. Right? So just keep that in mind too. And that's really everything moving forward, whether you're a player, coach, whatever, just especially for the younger ones moving up. You're going to hear a lot of things, and that doesn't mean it works for you. But I think the best advice I can give you is when you hear things from people like Steve, who helps out referees, just listen and give respect to hear it. And and, and imagine your mind like a sieve, right? Like it's, it's all coming through you. And what are you going to catch? Like, what are you going to catch in your colander, right? Um, some things are just going to go through it, but some things you're going to retain because it works differently for all of us. But if we can just talk about what might work for you, it might not work for Jake, but it might work for you. And you're like, oh, I want to try this thing that Jake said. So that's kind of just what this is about. And just 
touching base with each other and just seeing what might be helpful and what might not be and just how you might rate that success. So I'll just give you guys about 10 minutes or if we're done before that great. But again, just come up with any ideas that you may have and how you might um, address those issues during your game and how successful they are or were or imagined. <laughs> Scenario. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so they that. make the player try and go in the oh, pass. Yeah. Hey, oh, is there a box with the player's head in it? During a youth year, you got your first year. During a youth year. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't the player, it was the AR on that side. His cousin was in there. Hold on. Yeah. It called me up by me. Hello. Maybe so. Okay. Next scenario. It is. So. Uh, All right, right. Yeah. 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 What other scenarios you got? Okay. Um, I'm not a referee. So yeah. Not really. oh, come on. Yeah. I'm I'm not kind of this one after a couple of weeks. I'm going to the team. Um, and at halftime, I had a bunch of my first team. I don't know what we're supposed to do with the ref on that. I didn't know what to do. Sure. 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 Set pieces that are blatantly against the rules <laughs> and how you handle that. Sure. Um, players talk. So, this wasn't a game that I repped, but it's happened at like two or three of the games I've been in where my players have like caught animals on the field moles, <laughs> mice, frogs. <laughs> it's okay, that's the first. <laughs>
to make your job easier, I want to know like how to <laughs> analyze the uh, Since you already gave us the uh, tool that you used that scenario, yeah. 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 how would you rate that? <laughs> oh, affected? As far as not hearing the whistle again, yeah. yeah. five. As far as, as far as professionalism, maybe closer to a one. Yeah. I'm aware. I hand signals that are your audience. Um, and and they I'm getting right. my best judgment. Right. <laughs> what the majority of the penalties are, but there's always uh, like two or three that like I just have to from that. Clearly, mm -hmm. just yeah. so down in the real ones. The point that like I think the question is about fairly and so I have to. I think we match on this one. Wait, just, just really like. Just, I will hear the dominant strong one after that. Okay. It's just so yeah. bad. That it's like we all want to pay and get a statement set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Maybe we can have our best game in the first three quarters. Can we do to work with Cat like we can coach on that topic? Yeah. Or do we have the best last quarter of the game? Okay, so just a boiling point. Oh, yeah, boiling point. They kept yes. harping on like break for all the season. Or they kept yeah. asking yeah. for that once. That's, 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 that's what everybody's talking about. Like, yeah. Coach, the assignment is called Captain. None. Zero. But they all talked about it in the pre match. Yes. Everybody read it in the interviews. Yeah, but it wasn't really. It was like not an issue. Interesting. Michael, you didn't know the rules? So I think it's a really good approach. And this person is like, I'm going to do it. It was just my best experience that they used to be like straight up. They're like, but now you know what you're about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Epa? All right. You have five minutes and a half. You come out good one. and run to and ask the one for the game. If you should not. Captain, we're probably going to leave. This is the last one. This is the last one. Captains who want to have really detailed conversations at the wrong time. So at a free penalty against them, they want to ask a complicated, nuanced question. A lot of times as a referee, at halftime, if I know there's an issue that I want to address, I will go to the huddle and I will say, hey, listen, uh, when this guy did not yeah. do a warning, you can see set these moves that are illegal. Jen, did you do anything when you saw that? Um, you three minutes and three minutes. Like, go with the coaches, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, say, hey, I see what you're doing. This is the rules that they're breaking. Let's play on The two specific ones that we're playing one was the Right. And the more unusual one was they were practicing. Scrums with a, a thing yeah. out of the scrum. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, just, since I still have a the more common scenario where it's <coughs> consolidating my points to like 30 seconds or less. They're training their line up speed. Um, so, like, jump we went into waiting. overtime for the first two for the start this season at during NCAA finals. So yes, yeah, so you just talked about it right away. I, I, I usually go into the tool I've used in the past. I just go to the coach right away. This is what I've seen here. This is the issue with it. So, I have to sprint the whole field back and, like, Tell them to get me anybody got like a different tool you use. Like I'm the just next 20 minutes non stop going into half to early. Yeah, I think I was there for a while. Um, well, you were there for the like, oh, yeah, you were there for the first day of the like, one. Just tell them like what I'm going to say by like, it wasn't, the they knew it. They got blown up for it. And then their shoes and then most terrible for all of us coming. Well, no, that was the second. That was, we heard about the second. Two weeks later when I had them again, and that was other stuff. That's different. Yeah. I think Otis probably remembered. Are you really rushing him? So I wasn't referee in that game. <laughs> <laughs> that um, honestly, I think they just let them walk off the field with it because it's like probably has different ankles than the first time. Because the animals still in the hands of play. So I think I think each time it's happened, the mole mouse or frog has been delivered to the sideline, and then like just the way that you communicate with the referee definitely. So it might be a bit of a real difference. I think men might. Like, you're like, you're like, hey, you're on your own, buddy. Because I feel like you're going to break up the baby. And we love to try to do that. And we love to try to do that. And we love to try to do that. Let's do repeated offsides. What are our tools to be like? Hey, Captain, talk to this player. We need to have this game up versus penalty. You're going to drop it. I mean, obviously, you're going to drop it. I had a bunch of cards in the for us here. Uh, I had violence that I should have maybe after the game. Well, one time. Yeah. Last minute, 
Yeah. So one of the players yeah. I've seen once, good and bad. Or, so okay. having yeah. a constructive conversation with the say. captain, scoring yeah. the field to stop. And just him saying that, also like, seeing a referee like, look at what's going on. But just say should. to the captain, I'm just going to card so the next it. player who's <laughs> offside. <laughs> and it could be so a sub who just came on. And there's all of a sudden a yellow card. Yeah. I didn't give a card to the dude who made just quit of the scoreboard, but I did give a red card. Clear physical are watching this. And I thought yeah, that lots was of visual. Visual. I see lots of the visuals. The more grandiose your visual, most teams know what you're up to. So they're more than allowed to do like a red card. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to go to. There's two spots you can see. see. Like if um, game, you're playing like yeah. north south this way, like here's the last breakdown. And as a referee, we're offside lines here. You can stop to there. You're still, still your physical you're still presence. Charge when they're doing their hands. That's right. Still like physical yeah. presence. Yeah. yeah. So I call that here, but right. more like visual. But Which the other one I wanted to say, like someone, I, someone taught me this this year, is like you can make eye contact with the team of defenders. A lot of times they won't be looking at you, but it's like you can establish that and like they know that you're looking right at them. It's like quick. They're really scoreboard. So that's like we got four tools possible for that one. Um, I I use the physical positioning. We got in the line, and that does not work. For me, so it's like get out of my way. Get out of the way. All right, we're done. We're shining my whistle. It'd be really it's a good, good tool right now, but I did not realize. I saw the big words. Was, 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 was that Queen's Point? No, it was here. Oh, it was Yeah, it was in Okay, we'll come back. We can be in here. We've only got about fifteen minutes left. I'm gonna kind of record some of these scenarios and tools, like I said earlier, in case anyone wants to um, go down, take photos, learn something from these, and then um, I'll just kind of end my spiel on invisibility and then uh, open it up to questions. So, Jake, give me one of the scenarios that you guys talked about in your drill. Repeated offsides. And what's your tool for that? There's like four. Okay. So you could uh, once you notice a pattern, then you can start warning the captain that something bad is going to happen. You can go to the pocket. You can use physical presence to get closer to that offside line and kind of see your presence pushes them back, and eye contact or gesticulation to indicate that you are noticing that they're not yet. Okay. Good. Who's the uh, captain? Yes. Yep. Before, before we move on, actually, that's really interesting because I see five tools. Because I think one, warning the, the in, in practicing team is one tool. And I think we identified in our group that the captain on the field is another tool in our group as a referee. Absolutely. So I like that that, that got brought up over there because we had that as almost, I think, our first one. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, that was your first one. Um, coaches trying to communicate during the game. So that's your scenario. Our scenario. Yep. And then one of the big tools that we did bring up was the captain is your tool because um, they are your liaison between your players, your coach. And I'm and assuming, record. yes, when you say the coach is communicating, we're probably going to say they're negatively communicating then. For the most part, yeah. But I mean, also just in general. Sure. It's not painful. It can, depending on when, right? Because there's a time when it's probably. And that was another one of our tools was you know using the ha the half for a coach to come. Half time. Okay. Yeah. So tool is half time. Half time coach communication basically mm -hmm. is what you're focusing on though, but using half time as a tool for the referee the coach tool. to communicate. Right. right. Yes, Steve. Well, mm -hmm. Ellen, team communication. Go to go to don't be afraid to go to the teams at halftime. Right, and sort of halftime is as a tool for yes. Halftime is the tool. You can go to the coach, you can go to the team, you can go to the captain, but using that to you know set expectations, same as the beforehand talk before the game starts. Yeah, you know, set your expectation of if you want coaches. For this one specific example, was it was a NC so like so I hear I think it's a little, talk to the referee right set expectations maybe yeah. I've heard in there too that's important um, and really just using the way I would summarize it is using periods during a game 
right? What periods during your game or what downtime during your game can they use as a tool, right? Mm -hmm. And pull down. Yes. Great. Okay. Another one over on this side. There's a critter on the field. Yeah, there's a critter <laughs> on the field. That one's, yeah, that one's crazy, but that's that's going to distract people, right? So what do you what do you do about critters on the field? <laughs> Actually, now that I think about this, somebody's dog did run onto the field once during a WPO <laughs> game to try to get the ball as it was coming yeah. out of the scrum. So now that I think about that, I've had animals. I like this example because the tool is going to come out and go to the tool, but stopping the game. Stopping the game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, did you give the dog a red card? God, I, <laughs> I gave the dog a treat even though it wasn't the good one. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, stopping the game, right? Like we don't have a lot of stoppages in rugby, which is great, but sometimes like we just might need to stop it, right? Reset everybody because I'm sure when I hear your stories of frogs and all these other things, everyone's distracted by that, right? So, great. All right, another one over on this side. Um, another one that we talked about yeah. was post-match altercation. Just post-match? <laughs> well, this is a specific example. Okay. But um, physical violence and altercation that happened after the final whistle for all the game. That's not my fault. All right. What, is, what else do you have for tools for that one? Um, for tools yes. for that one in specific was um, brought up the disciplinary board or whoever is in charge of the event. Yes. Specifically being a tournament, you know, what they want to do for the red card that was issued after the match. And do they take that? Harry? Is this part? Is this part? And in the moment, all the big girls were having the best part of the night. Trying to sound the best on the road. I like it. You're doing a great job there. That's that's great. Like, after the fact, in the moment, having been trained in nonviolent crisis intervention for school, just getting the attention. You have a whistle blast the whistle as hard as you physically can and it will most likely at least distract the two that are throwing punches momentarily it, it'll get things to stop most likely not always but if you can distract whomever you're more likely to you don't have to regain control it's not our responsibility as referee to, to break up a fight but you can from further away get them to stop most likely yep Great. Okay, we're going to do one more on each side here and then kind of see how some of these might work and how they might work with others and then wrap it up. Go ahead, Jay. What else do you have? Uh, touchdown just secretly brought a whistle to the game and made the call during the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to have both of them here. Because we have this call in football, I'm just going to call it the inadvertent whistle. <laughs> And that was uh, why and why was so much of that. But anyway, uh, what, are, what would you use in your toolkit to deal with this uh, touch touch? Yes, yeah, yeah. stop the game, accosted the whistle, and threw that second whistle far away. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> probably. Are you supposed to give it to a dog or something? Like that? Yeah. Yeah. They threw it on the ball. That would be more inadvertent whistles happening then. You're training that dog to blow that whistle. <laughs> so that one, I think throwing the whistle is probably like the one star in the success yeah. category because like that's what effective. The, that that you do with that touch dodge and people watching the optics and everything. But so what else can we do with that besides throw the whistle? <laughs> the whistle. Like, uh, communication. communication. Yes. We have halftime communication, but I would just say in general. I'm gonna write it really big. <laughs> But communication. <laughs> we hear this probably a hundred times a day, but obviously communication is your biggest tool. And adding to that, as we talked about, is finding the moments and the periods to do it. Because when you use that communication in some moments, it's not going to be successful and it's just white noise and wasted energy for everybody. I like that you wrote communication and not just words. Yeah. Because so much of communication is also nonverbal. Yes. One thing that we didn't get to that we were about to get to is body language. Yes. So if, a, if, for example, in our example, the coach had a question about the calls that were being made on field, can the coach come talk to the referee at halftime? A big piece of that is the body language. Is the referee being recipient to these questions? Or is it, no, I'm super focused, I don't want to talk to you right now? 
and that's part of expectation setting, but also body language goes throughout all of how we communicate. Yes. Okay, one more quickly from you guys then. Last time or last week. Yeah, okay. Fantastic. Yeah. So I guess just really quickly, I know we talked about throwing the whistles, probably not very um not very successful, but what do you guys think about the rest of these tools and, and how successful they are? Um again, we don't necessarily need to to rank them, but would you say that these are kind of um, big ones that we want to discuss as far as being successful. Like, would another tool be um, like reviewing, like post all of the events, like talking with administration and like having that referee be reviewed? That was the touch judge with an additional whistle. Like, are these people actually getting um, not punished, but like reviewed and like, or are they just getting the next coaching job and like, or referee job and? They just hope that they don't do that again. So I would, yes, that's good. And I would say maybe just being, um, is there a being point? receptive? To, yeah, like being receptive to post game review because referees do get reviewed or evaluated or coached. So I would just say a tool is just being receptive. Maybe is what you're saying. Being receptive to a post game mm -hmm. review or evaluation or coaching or whatever. <clears throat> Can I expand on like the halftime tool? Yes. So I think there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities where we have a chance to talk to either coaches or players, halftime being one of them. I think set pieces is another really really good one. So every like my first scrum, I don't say a lot in the pregame. At the scrum, I ask the props and tell them what I'm expecting. So it's right when they're about to do it, so they can't forget it. Because um, I didn't say much in my pregames because the players are all about the game. Whatever you say is gonna go right through their ears. I'm just telling you that right now. But again, we have to be there. We have to gain some rapport. We have to get seen in front of, especially front rows. This is um, probably the most challenging part of being a referee for most referees is, is the scrum and what's going on in the front rows. And it also tends to be one of the most unsafe places or especially with more uh, like newer and not as experienced people. You know, we don't want people going down and getting hurt and stuff, right? I mean, open field tackles, that's another issue, but we, can, we have more control of what's happening in the scrum. And we want the players to be able to do what they need to do. We're not there to coach them. So we don't necessarily want to take the pregame and have a 15 minute conversation, right? They're just, they're gonna forget it all. And we're gonna start on not the greatest foot and your voice is already gonna be white noise. And you've probably heard that a million times, but in rugby, it, it is, uh, it's a different sport in the regard that it is flowing and you are actually helping the players to not get a penalty, to keep the game flowing. And so part of that is the invisibility piece that I brought up before, is if we can use these moments and if we can use these tools, right? Like we talk about communication and we didn't just say words, right? Because a lot of it is, like you said, a body language or it's a whistle. Um, but a lot of times it is words and we have to be careful which words we use and not repeat them and find the right moments and then we can be invisible and everybody likes the game better. It's, it's really the biggest compliment when I would get some after games was that. If somebody came up to me and said, you were invisible today. Honestly, like for me, that's the biggest compliment and my mentality is, it still is as an official, is find a reason not to blow the whistle or throw the flag or whatever sport you're doing, you should be looking for reasons not to. And you can get there if you know your tools, right? If you know these situations, um, because it's not about, I know the laws and I'm gonna blow the whistle for this. Um, it's how much did you put in beforehand to get to a point where you don't have to do that? where the players just can play because they know your expectations. They know, okay, this ref is serious today. They have to stop the game to reset everything, whether it's critters on the field, or maybe there's a big injury and it's just better if you have to stop. I don't know if that's happened to you guys before. We want to plan through rugby, but if you see a really bad collision and, and everyone kind of stops and is like concerned, like you're kind of a jerk if you play out, right? Even though we know we can have trainers come on the field and do this, like you also have to have humanity 
And sometimes you might just have to stop the game and that's better for everybody. And that those are things you need to know. And those are things you need to know because you've experienced, because you've seen it, because you've talked in a room. But I'm telling you that all these things, no matter what the scenario, what the tools are, if you can find ways to use them and know when to use them and try to make yourself invisible, be knowledgeable yet find ways not to blow the whistle, like everybody's gonna be happier on the day and it's gonna be a better product like I talked about. It's, it's, it's a product for spectators, really. I mean, even for players, like it's about the players, we say that, but it's really about the spectators. And especially in a sport, and I'm not gonna go too far into this, uh, this down this rabbit hole, but in a sport that really needs help to be taken seriously and be professional in this country, we have to get a good product out there in the market and how do we do that? And we all have to work together to do that, I guess is all I'm gonna say in summary. So I hope that you guys have gotten more tools in your toolkit here, that you've learned something from your peers. You have situations that you might wanna try, you know, tools to try out. And then really, you know, one big thing, and we hear it a lot in society today, but it's true, is how do you feel empowered to do this now? How do you feel confident to do it? Again, you're the only referee on the field. So you have to have the confidence to do this. And how do you get confidence? You get it through experience. You get it through talking about it. You get it so it doesn't happen to you in a game and you go, oh crap, I have no idea what to do with this. Like you wanna prepare for the best, or expect the best or be prepared for the worst, right? So then how can you practice using these? And, and honestly, in a day with technology, video is a really big resource. And, and talking to your peers too, it's just watching it on video. And it can be really any level because some of the weird wonky things happen in lower level games anyway. You know, So the, some of those games are really good to watch sometimes just to see what can happen in a game and go, oh crap, what am I gonna do if Brock comes on the field or whatever? Because it's not common, right? Um, that's all I would say in closing and uh, just thanking you guys for your time here today. And if you have any questions, there's my email. Um, I'm always open to talking about anything. Thank you guys for your time.